in this tutorial, we're going to be covering how we export our data that we have collected in um, Google Form surveys um, into Excel. Um, this is very important because uh, once you have collected data, even though the responses are provided and some simple like charts or tables may be provided, um, the truth is for advanced statistical analysis, you do need the data out of this platform. Um, and Google Forms is used um, or is recommended by me when you don't have access to any other um, paid um, platforms like Qualtrics or even the more advanced versions of SurveyMonkey or other um, survey software. And this is because, again, in those software um, or on those platforms, the free version will allow you to collect your data. They might limit the number of responses that you can collect. So for example, Qualtrics I know um, limits you to 100 participants and um, you can only have one survey running at a time. Not just that, but once you get the results back, you are able to see it, but you're not able to take it out of the platform. And that would be a big issue for um, students who are conducting uh, major research projects and really need to do some advanced statistical analysis. Um, so this is a survey that we created in my marketing research class and I went ahead and put in just a couple of responses so that I would have data to export. So to export the data, what you're going to do is actually get it as a CSV file and that CSV file will open in Microsoft Excel and um, once the file is, is properly formatted in terms of the data that's in the file is properly formatted, the CSV formatted, format can be imported into statistical analysis software like PSPP or SPSS. For the purposes of marketing research, you would be importing your um, data into PSPP. So what you need to do is to click on these three vertical dots and you will see here a option for download responses that csv and once you click on it you will be given the option to um download the file so i'm going to just go ahead and save it on my computer and I'm going to go to my downloads and access this file. So this is the, the CSV file. So once you see the CSV file extension, what you're going to do is to right click and go ahead and open with and you're going to open with Microsoft Excel, of course. So this is the file that um, has been um, imported or exported, sorry. This is the file that has been exported into um, Excel. Now, something to note here is that file in its current format cannot be imported into well it can be imported into PSPP however um, you will find that they are not able to for example do statistical analysis on the questions that have textual responses and also how the, the, the variables are currently named will create a problem um, all of the rules that you have learned about naming variables and um, what SPSS or PSPP needs in order to conduct advanced statistical analysis um, remain the same. So you do need to actually go through now and rename all of these variables. So you have to give these variables pretty much names that are one word, no spaces, the only exclamation point, mark that can be the only um punctuation mark sorry the only punctuation mark that can be used is an underscore 
So for example, a question like, what is your gender? You would just have to go ahead and just name the variable, right? So make sure, make sure that there are no spaces before or after the variable name, right? And you have to go ahead and do it for every single variable. So you have to go age, name, um, you have to find a name for this. And so you have to develop what we call a coding scheme. The coding scheme would tell you what each variable name is, what that variable measures, and also how the variable is measured. So meaning what these numbers stand for. And this is particularly important because just like you have to make changes to the name of the variable, you also have to make changes to any responses that are not um, any responses that are not numerical. You have to actually go ahead and pre-code them as numerical responses. So for example, I would have to, based on my coding scheme, go ahead and change gender from female to a number, change gender from male to a number. I have to change, for example, the soda consumption, the brands that are consumed, I have to change all of those to a number. So you have to go ahead and do all of that so any cells that contain textual responses, I have to go ahead and code them. So for example, what if I decided that I wanted to code female as two and male as one, I would go through the entire spreadsheet for all my responses and actually make that change for all the responses. Um, for example, in this instance, do you consume soda beverages? I have to con convert all the yeses to a number, all the noes to a number. I have to convert all the brands to a number. So you have to go ahead and make all of those changes. So when you are finished, you should have a, an Excel spreadsheet that looks like this. So at the end of the process, your Excel spreadsheet needs to just have variable name, no spaces before or after, right? So you see even soda preference, I've changed that to underscore. I've coded all the brands, coded ethnicity, education, income. I've given all the variables names, right? And in all the cells, other than the first cell, which has a variable name, all the cells should contain numbers. When you have a file in this format, then you have a file that is ready to be um, imported into SPSS or PSDP. And you want to go ahead and make sure that that file is saved as a CSV file. So you're not going to save it as an Excel spreadsheet. So you go to File, Save As. You are not going to select Excel workbook. You are going to select CSV, right? And so you save your CSV file. And then you actually have a file that is um, ready to be imported into um, PSPP. So once you have your file saved as a CSV file, you are going to go ahead and begin the process of importing your um, file into SPSS or PSPP. Now in PSPP, what you will need to do is to use the file import procedure to, to, to import the file. So you go to file, import data, and you are going to select the CSV file type, and that would just um, make it easy for you to find your CSV file. So this is my CSV file. I select and I click next. Now, I want to import all the cases from the, 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 the file. I click Next. Now, it says you should select the first line of the data file that contains data. Bear in mind that the first line of the file actually contains your variable names, so you have to go ahead and click select the second line, right? Then, you will check the button that says line above selected line contains variable names. So this is what is going to be um, imported. And as you can see, CSV is comma separated values. So what they've done is everywhere you see a comma, it, the, the, the software knows that that's a new um, case, right? So you go ahead and click next. And it asks what the separators are. 
comma that is true so we can use comma and this is one of the reasons why you can't use any other um punctuation marks really in your in your verbal names because it could have been that a space separated verbal name it could have been that a colon or any of these other ones right so what you go ahead and do is when you're naming those to make it easy for yourself and to prevent any confusion when you're importing the files you just keep the names very very simple no other punctuation mark except the underscore not the hyphen because the hyphen could be a, a separator too so you go ahead and you click next here and it is showing you that these are the formats that you are going to get. So this is what it's going to look like. So this is what the data view is going to look like. And this is what the verbal view is going to look like. And it's asking that you should check to see if there are any issues. And this is very important, particularly because um, if there are going to, if, if you made a mistake, for example, in naming your variables, and you had in other separators, it would show up here. So your, um, your web review would probably look a little bit strange and you would know that there is an issue that you have to actually cancel the procedure, go ahead and um, modify your CSV file in Excel before you, 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 you do this um, process. So you go ahead and you click apply and lo and behold, you have your data file and as you can see, here is the verbal view, and this is the data view. One thing to note is that once you get to this point, you will have to go ahead and insert variable labels. So you have to go ahead and actually put in the variable labels based on whatever coding scheme or codebook that you're using. So for example, I am going to put in here gender of respondents. I have to click enter gender of age of respondents and so on. So you'd have to go ahead and you can widen the, the, the column so that it can be seen. You're also going to have to enter the value labels because bear in mind that gender was measured one, two. So you have to go in and based on your full book, you have to say what one is and what two is and you would have learned how to actually enter value labels before. If you already know what the missing values are, now is a good time to specify your missing values. And you can also go ahead and um, adjust each of these to the correct level of measurement, bearing in mind that um, while the software won't restrict you from conducting data analysis if the level of measurement specified is wrong, you need to know what the current level of measurement is so that you are not specifying inappropriate procedures given the level of measurement. Um, so once you are at this point, you should be good to go in terms of how to um, run your frequency distributions and to conduct data analysis on your, your files. So this concludes our tutorial on how to um, export our files from Google Forms into CSV format and then how to prepare them and then import them back into SPSS or PSPP.